So now that we have everything imported into ZBrush, let's go ahead and start looking at how we can actually use the program. So I do have a much more kind of detailed uh, version of an introduction to ZBrush. So if you want to take the time to uh, look this up, you can just look for my username on YouTube. And you can find this uh, playlist that I've got going on here for this, where it's an introduction to ZBrush. I've got uh, something for about the uh, interface and basic sculpting, brushes, hotkeys, all this different stuff, right? Um, I'm going to give you just like the shorthand version in this video to kind of get you up to speed as quickly as possible for this. Um, in order for me to do that, one other thing that I've got, um, let me go back to a web browser and I'll just make a new tab. And if we do a search for Nick ZUCC and do Gumroad, and we'll do uh, ZBrush interface. Let's just go ahead and load this up. And you can see that I've got this uh, ZBrush interface, and I've got uh, where you can pay zero zero dollars for it. You can download that, and it's for 2018 to 2019. But it basically gives you this interface that I'm going to be using in with my uh, brushes that are on here. So you download this, uh, and there's also a hotkeys folder, um, a file actually. And once you have that, you can go to preferences, and you can go to config, and you can load UI. And you can search for the UI that I provide for you and load that up. Once that's loaded up, your UI should look like what you see here with the different brushes and everything that I got down here. And then you say store config. And every time you load up ZBrush, it's going to load up with that custom UI that I've given you. And if you go to hotkeys, you can load the hotkeys that I provide for you. And after you load the hotkeys, you can hit store. So the hotkeys are pretty simple. Um, these are the brushes that we're going to kind of take a look at and maybe go over. And so this would be hotkey 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 for this. Okay. Um, so in order to get started, let's talk about maybe just navigation real quick. So we can just click and drag in the viewport, and that's going to rotate around. If you hold on Alt and then click and drag, it's going to pan. If you want to zoom in and out, you can do Control right click and move the pen or mouse cursor in an up and down motion like this, and it'll zoom in and out. Now there is one other way to um, to zoom in and out. You can hold down Alt and you can kind of click and drag around. And if you just let go of Alt while you're doing this motion, it'll turn into a zoom. Now that probably seems really counterintuitive but um, it is actually going to be like a really quick motion and after you've done it for a while it becomes pretty intuitive and it's not that big of a deal uh, the other thing is we can turn perspective on and off by tapping this and so you can tap P to turn on and off perspective now if you rotate your uh, view and you hold down shift while you rotate it snaps into these different degrees of uh, rotation for the camera so say I want to watch, uh, look at the top view, I can kind of rotate it like this, or if I can kind of roll it back this way and kind of get it close to the top and hold down shift, it'll snap it in that view. And I can still zoom out. So it's like you can do these different orthographic uh, cameras really quickly and then just turn on perspective and go back into perspective. You are seeing a grid because the floor is turned on. So if you want to turn that off, you can turn that off. If you want to see um, the... Uh, wireframe for things you can turn on this poly frame right here for whatever particular object that you're using and if you hold down alt you can click on different objects and you can actually select them and see them so you can see i'm taking a look at the different pieces and the different pieces of geometry that were imported into zbrush at that time so we can turn that off if you want to look at one item at a time you can uh, put on solo so you can see like whenever you highlight something if it's selected actually what you're doing is you are over here in the subtool area and these are all the different pieces that were imported in with the FBX and if you want to just look at one particular item at a time you can hold down alt and select it it's going to be highlighted in more of a whitish kind of color and then you can click on solo and you can take a look at just that object alone Okay, so now I want to show you guys what the difference is between using subdivision levels and also using Dynamesh. So I think in order to do this, I'm gonna I got a hotkey for uh, this for the uh, solo. I use Alt S for that, and that should be in there with the hotkeys that I've got. 
Um, I'm going to take this object here, solo it um, right there, and I'll turn on the polyframe for it. And let's take a look at geometry real quick. And under geometry, if we divide this, we'll divide it one, two, three, four times. And I'll turn this off and turn it back on. And you can see now at this point, I can see the individual polygons that it made. So this is pretty nice and it'll help us to kind of sculpt on it. I'll put on Damien standard and I'll make my brush kind of brush size kind of small. So I'll tap S and drag this, or you can hold down S and you can click and drag. Now, as I sculpt on here, you can see that the resolution is not all that great and it gets better in the corners. Um, that was because of what I was telling you about uh, in an earlier video where we maybe doubled up our edges and things like that on this piece of geometry that we have. And it was going to be having more geometry along the edges that we doubled up. So as we divided this thing, we can take the slider and we can drop it down here too. So you see how there's more geometry along the edges. And then these are nice and big polygons. So as we divide that model and we go the next division up and the next division up, you can see that when we finally get to this point, we do have some decent polygon distribution but it's like still not all that great and you can see how it's uh, the polygons are bigger over here and they're smaller over here so that's why it looks not too bad in through here and it doesn't look so great in through there i'll take the undo time slider and just slide this thing back until we don't have any marks on there and uh right before i've added the divisions to it maybe i'll add this many divisions to it okay so I could potentially just keep dividing this thing until it's divided so high that um, it's able to be sculpted on. Now the other thing that we could do is if we turn this into Dynamesh. So Dynamesh is a topology independent uh, kind of solution for sculpting on things. Now it will destroy the topology and it's going to destroy UVs so just be aware of that but it's more of a purely for just sculpting on kind of solution. So it's got a resolution to it. And if I turn it on, it's going to um, ask me, do I want to keep these subdivision levels? And I'm going to say no. And you can see this is the resolution that it gave us for 128. I'm going to hit undo. And I'm going to keep working with this number to kind of figure out where it should be. So because that's so low, I'm going to try something at least like 500. And click Dynamesh. I'll say no for that. And you can see the resolution is getting better. So let's keep going. I'm going to try 1200. And I'll say no. Now this is kind of dependent on the scale of the model. Um, so this is why I'm kind of just not really, it's kind of hard to figure out what the exact number is at times for what you need. So I'm going to do 1500 and that's getting better. And maybe what I need to be at is maybe 2400. I'll say no for that. And let's go up a little bit higher. We'll do 3500 and let's see if i can get this slider up in here i'm gonna, I'm gonna hit undo one last time and put it up as far as it'll go um, usually that's going to be like a super super high number so you can see i'm starting to get uh, some decent resolution on there now take a look whenever i sculpt in through here this is nice and consistent throughout the entire thing so that's the advantage of uh, doing the subdivision levels versus um, doing this uh, Dynamesh. So I'm going to hit Alt S to bring everything back. Now something that might be a bit um, better for resolution, let's take a look at this. I'm going to hold down Alt and select this one and we'll take a look at the polyframe on this and if we'll divide it we'll hit Control D. That's the divide button. If you hold your cursor over things you can see there's a hot key associated with a lot of things. So I'll keep hitting Control D and divide and I'll do five subdivision levels on this one. Let's take a look as I sculpt on this. We still have that problem that I was kind of telling you about where it's uh, got some issues where the polygons are going to be quite a bit bigger there and it gets really tight and through the corners. So we can try to put it on Dynamesh for this one as well. And uh, we'll do, let's just do 3000 right now. And we'll click Dynamesh and I'll say no for that. And we'll let it do its thing. This is a little bit bigger object, so we'll see what kind of resolution that it builds for us. And that looks pretty pretty decent. So I think that would probably work for us there. 
Now it is possible that you can download certain plugins uh, for ZBrush and if I went and I clicked and dragged this so we can go open this up. This part of the interface opens and closes by double clicking these little arrows. And if I open this space up over here, I can go to Z plugin, I can click and drag this and I can dock this over. So anything on the menu, you can click and drag and kind of dock within there. So um, I've got this plugin called Dynamesh Master and you would have to go and find uh, where that is. So let me show you this real quick. If we go to Dynamesh Master ZBrush, we could uh, go to the download center. So here at the download center, if we just kind of scroll down just a little bit, let's go find this uh, plugin that we see here for Dynamesh Master. So it's right down in here. You can click download and it's going to give you a zip installer. Um, I'm just going to put mine on the downloads area just real quick and copy this. Uh, I'll just save that. And I'll uh, show in the folder and go in through here and I will tell it to extract to this uh, right here and it'll give me a folder for that and let's just take a look at what's in here so we've got a text file that'll help us kind of understand um, where this needs to be you're gonna have to close ZBrush and you have to copy the contents of the folder for Dynamesh install and you have to put it in uh, this this area here uh, for Pixelogic, like depending on the version that you're using, and I'm using 2019. Uh, so I'm going to go to C Program Files, Pixelogic, right here like this, and go to uh, ZBrush 2019 and Z Startup, and go to Z Plugs uh, Z64. And you take this whole Dynamash uh, master install. Let's see what we got here. If I go in here, and we've got the data, uh, Dynamash master data 2019. And let me see if I can find that. It's right here. I've already got it there. You just throw these two things in that area, and then you start ZBrush back up. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, let me go ahead and hop back on over to ZBrush real quick. And we're going to go into this uh, Z plugins area. Again, if we open this up and drag this on over here and we open up the Dynamesh Master, it should show up into uh, this area. And so if I hold on Alt S, that's my hotkey that I set up for this for soloing. If we take a look at this object, and we already kind of looked at just this regular Dynamesh. Uh, way of dynameshing. If we turn this on millions of polygons and we do something like 0.25, then that should be uh, like 250,000 polys. So you can see the resolution that we got going on here. If we do 0.1, we can do this. So it's a pretty nice way of kind of controlling the numbers for this. So if we do 1.5, like the default, we can get something uh, that's a pretty decent resolution on there. And if I go back to uh, my pen and then I start to kind of draw on this, you can see with the Damien standard some of the detail that we got kind of going on for this thing. So it's nice and even. Now, if this isn't high enough for you, um, we could uh, go back to this right in here where we've got um, this. Uh, let's go back to where we've got decent geometry for this in through here. I'm going to go keep scrolling back in the time slider. And we'll get back to a very earlier kind of stage like this. So this is nice and clean. Uh, if I think if I do like two, that'll do two million polys for us. And we'll just click that. And hopefully we should not see much of a change at all. It kind of beat up the corners just a little bit. But I think that's working pretty good. And now you can see we've, we get it to where we can get pretty nice and predictable sculpting throughout the entire surface. So I think this is going to be a much easier way for you to use Dynamesh uh, versus maybe this over here. It's kind of hard to find, like I said, that perfect resolution. And this is even having trouble even going up to the highest resolution here. So this plugin is just going to do a lot of work for you behind the scenes that kind of helps out with that whole problem. So the next thing I want to kind of have you guys think about is these large forms and medium detail and then 
smaller, finer kind of detail. So if we put on trim dynamic, this brush is really good for just kind of maybe running along edges and kind of beating up a little bit. So if you just kind of run it along here, we could kind of flatten this thing out and think about how this might be worn down over time and get rough edges. And I'm going to solo this. I'm just going to put this on solo. Alt S for me, for my hotkey. Uh, or I can click on this button right in through here. Now if you want to crispen up edges, there is a H polish brush, which we'll look at. This side is kind of a flat, and then this side is kind of a flat. And you push them together, and it builds up a really nice kind of crisp edge. But you can make this brush size a little bit smaller. I'll tap S, and then you can click and kind of keep working on this. And to me, the resolution on this is still a bit... Um, still a bit chunky not really what I would hope for so I could even put that on maybe two million click Dynamesh again like this and on the interface I do have this thing called clay polish which kind of um, stylistically it's like a filter maybe you could think of something like Photoshop and um, I can get rid of the mask that it gener auto generates a mask on edges so I can hold down control and get rid of any kind of masking on there now um, if I'm not careful, if I hold on control and I do that again, it will try to do the Dynamesh thing. So that's how you remesh with Dynamesh. You just hold on control and keep dragging like a marquee in the open viewport like that, and it'll remesh for you. I'm not really interested in remeshing with the standard Dynamesh uh, method, so now you can turn it off altogether completely. So you can go to Geometry, and you can turn off Dynamesh completely. And at that point, if you hold down control and do this, nothing's going to happen. Now, if you hold down control and drag over, you're actually generating a mask on here. If you hold down control and click on the alpha area, you could uh, choose a shape. So if I hold down control and drag this out, I could do some masking like this for a star or something. And if you drag it out and you hold down uh, the space bar, you can actually move this thing around. So you could do a mask like this. You could invert it. Control I, or you can hold down Control and then click in the open viewport like this. And then if you put it on something, let's say like clay tubes, I could kind of run this along here and just build the surface up like this. And hold down Shift. Anytime you hold down Shift, you can take any brush that you have and turn it into a smoothing brush. Just hold down Control and then drag in the open viewport, and that re uh, lets go of the uh, the mask that you have here. So I'm gonna hit Undo. I just wanted to kind of show you how that works like that. Uh, the other thing that we could do is with masking is that we can, I'm going to hold down control and turn alpha off. And uh, let's see here. I'll hit okay for that. I was just going back and forth in time, the history time slider. So that's another kind of interesting thing about ZBrush. It's got this history time slider so you can go back in history. But if you go back in history and start to do an operation, it's basically saying, you want to go back in history because you're going to lose all that if you start sculpting on it you know so we'll put it there and let's get rid of that mask and now if i hold on control i could draw masking directly on the the uh, the object like this if i hold on control and alt and click on it i can sharpen up the mask if i hold on control and click on it i can smooth the mask and if i hold on control and alt i can remove parts of this mask. So this is a way that you could do like more ornate kind of detail if you wanted. So you could do something like this. And then hold down Control and Alt and click on it. And then crispen that up and then hold down Control and click in the open viewport. And then now I can put on clay tubes Make my brush size a little bit larger just by tapping S and then dragging that out, doing that. Now I can smooth that out. Now that would be a more sculptural kind of form doing that. Um, the other thing I could do is with that mask, I'm going to hit undo, invert it. And I do have this inflate feature that we've got going on here. So I could just inflate it 
just a little bit. So if you want to choose like a particular number, you just click on it once and you can tap a number and hit enter. So I'll do one and then let go. And you can see I could hold down shift and kind of smooth that out just a little bit. And then you can do some kind of detail on there like that. So I'm going to hit undo until we get this back and get rid of it. Um, so standard brush, uh, you might have lazy mouse turned on. I'm going to turn that off. With the standard brush, it's just more kind of like uh, building up stuff like this. There's nothing really super special about this brush. Now you can put it on an alpha and you can get texture to things. So if I made this a little bit larger, you can see what we got going on here for this. If it's too strong, you can always tap U and then click and drag and that's the Z intensity that's up here. So I could drag this a lot smaller. And let's take the intensity down really low. I'm going to hit undo real quick on all this here. And you can see this would be the like the very last kind of finer kind of detail that you would have going on for this. Okay, so our standard. Now, um, this Damien standard brush is this got this alpha on here, and it makes a really nice cut, kind of going in on things. And lazy mouse might be turned on. So let me tell you about this. If it's turned on, if you see it turned on, it's great. If you don't want to use it, turn it off. And this is more like just kind of like freehand drawing some of this stuff. Now, if it's turned on. I usually take this lazy step and turn it down to zero. That just means it's kind of like if you got a brush build up, it's like brush, 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 brush. It's kind of like in Photoshop how it stacks um, the strokes on top of each other. Now, if you turn that down really low, um, what's going to happen, like let's see if it's this way. You see how it's step, step, step. If it's down to like zero, they're going to be right on top of each other, and that's kind of what I want. But it makes the brush a bit stronger, so you might have to tap U and drag down the intensity a little bit. Now I'm going to turn on lazy smoothing. This is smoothing out the average of the the stroke that you have, and then this lazy radius. If you put it up on something like about 50 or 40 somewhere in there, you can see you click and drag, and then you get this kind of trail behind. So it's really nice for doing these kind of more design kind of swirly kind of things. So in order to draw straight lines, I'm going to turn this lazy mouse off. And if you click and draw it and hold down shift, you can draw a straight line based off of a horizontal. Or if you click and drag and hold down shift, you can do a vertical as well. Now, if you want to rotate your camera, you can hold down shift and then click and drag up and down after you release shift. So again, you're holding down shift, you click and drag, and you're kind of doing this motion and you release shift and you can uh, change the camera angle. So if you want to build an angle like this, now you can hold down shift as I draw, and it'll draw a straight line kind of like this, right? Uh, the other thing that we can do is if we turn lazy mouse on, if we take a look at the stroke type and then click and drag that over within through here, we can put on this backtrack mode and say snap to track and say line, and you can click and drag out and go back all along that uh, line that it makes. So I'm just going to click and then kind of start working my way back and you can see it kind of snaps to that line that it drew like that. Uh, if I click and drag out here and then go back it's going to snap to that as well. So if you want to do those type of uh, straight lines it's possible for you to do that. So if I wanted to build some kind of groove within inside of here and kind of get that looking like it was built up through there. Uh, that's how I could use those tools to do that. I'm going to hit undo for that and uh, get rid of that and turn these guys off. So again, for that, for the backtrack, we've got a line snap to track on there. For this, the other thing I'll tell you about is if we put on the standard brush and we do a stroke type of drag rectangle, let's take a look at what this looks like if we do kind of a shape like this. So we could hold down Alt and we could dig in and when you click and drag it out with a drag rectangle, you get uh, something like this that lets you control the size. And then also as you spin it, it controls the rotation. Obviously, the way that this looks depends a lot on, um, you know, how strong the brush is. So we can click and drag out stuff like that. But if we tap U and then make this a lot softer, we can do stuff like this, holding down Alt. 
but I just would not be super, super um, heavy handed with these things, right? Um, if you've got it on Damien standard, you can do things like these kind of cracks. Um, I'm going to turn lazy mouse off and then make the brush size a little bit larger like this and through here. And this will be my medium level detail. Okay. And have some cracks kind of running through like that. And so I've got this kind of detail. So these have got these larger forms, smaller forms, these medium kind of level detail forms, and these smaller forms. And then maybe I can take trim dynamic. And I was showing you how to hit some edges on there before. You could actually run this along these parts and through here. To make this look a little bit more interesting. And if we put on H polish, we could do something like make the brush size a little bit smaller and kind of do some kind of interesting details like this. H polish is again, if I run it on this side of this and this side, I can kind of build up a really tight edge on there, or I could even run it along here to kind of flatten things just like what we were doing with uh, this trim dynamic brush. Now polish will do uh, something where if you run it on the surface and kind of run it in a circular kind of motion, it's kind of like we're polishing out a, a surface in the real world. So maybe I want to knock back some of these cracks that we've made like this and inflate this will actually take the surface and kind of blow it up and make things kind of run together so you can do some interesting things like this now I would uh, remesh this with the dynamesh thing and you can see because you can really tear the geometry up if you keep pushing it super super far but if you do it just slightly through here and then we click dynamesh for that it'll remesh it'll keep those changes the best that it can and um, kind of um, incorporate it all in together as one mesh now this thing did get really blurry I didn't tell you about this uh, I would turn off this blur factor that's on there and then click dynamesh and if we do that it should give fairly decent results but if it's still blurring out quite a bit you could put it on this project option and so if we do that it's going to take like this old mesh remake the new mesh and then project the details from the old thing onto the new thing so it does take a bit longer to do but if you're looking for um, different results like that then you might want to run that so um, I was just not even a fan of the options that it gave for this um, not the best so I'm just gonna leave it right there at the two million and sometimes I might just um, leave it at the particular area that it's at like just um, I'm gonna keep hitting undo until I get rid of some of this inflate information that you see on there and then beyond that the last brush I'll take a look at is this layer brush depending on the intensity of that brush will either raise the surface up a certain amount so if I just wanted to keep building this up a certain amount, I could do that. Now I could layer this on, it'll layer on top. There is this functionality, if you wanted to build everything up on the surface just a certain amount, if you stored a morph target, and um, that is actually under morph target, and you can say store a morph target. I put it on my interface here. So you're going to store a morph target, and now when you use the layer brush, I could come over here and do some stuff with the layer brush. I can come over here. And you can see it only builds up to a certain height. And so that could be kind of useful and kind of cool. So just a note about a difference between those two methods. And you can hold down Alt too and you can kind of dig away on this. So this one might be kind of nice to kind of just erode things just a little bit and make the brush size a little bit smaller. So you can make it feel like it's uh, being eroded and through there. Now that is kind of interesting that um, you know, if I store the morph target and I wrote it out after this has been a positive, how it kind of only leaves the positive and pushes on the negative just a little bit. So I'll just keep 
brushing on here like that and so I think for the most part this is what I want to show you for um, you know getting all your pieces set and ready to go into dynamesh mode and then just looking at some of these different brushes and um, attacking these different surfaces now the next step would be treating each one of these things like the material type that it is I was just running through and kind of showing you the tools not really thinking too much about material types and stuff like that now metals are going to be treated a little bit different than wood and obviously you're going to have to get your reference and load up your reference and start taking a look at what are the stroke types that you would use for um, wood versus uh, something that's metal right so that's going to be up to you artistically to figure out the tools and the right kind of brushes and uh, kind of figure those out i don't know if we looked at at least clay twos we kind of looked at it with the mask whenever we built up a mask but these kind of build up these clay kind of strips and they're nice for doing more uh, gestural kind of sculpting things and if you hold on shift we can kind of smooth some of those results out so i know i'm looking at um, metal here but if you're doing something like a like a, a wood grain you could even do something like that we're doing something like this and we kind of smooth out the results a little bit and then maybe you come back through with the Damien standard and start building line work that would feel a little bit, a little bit more organic and a little bit more like wood grain at that point like these different circular kind of patterns and then if it's too strong you know you just uh, would work to start smoothing some of that stuff out like this okay so this should be enough to kind of get you going and get you started sculpting and I'll just frame this guy up real quick and then just click the BPR render button real quick just to kind of check it and see what it looks like with uh, some shadow information so this should give you all the information you're looking for to get up and running and get started and doing some sculpting inside a ZBrush